Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is September the 29th, 2020. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just say this, I don't mean to be too controversial here. But as a group, at the top, right, let's say you take the top four fighters in each division. I believe that the cruiserweights at the top right now are more talented as a group than the guys at the top of the heavyweight division. In fact, let's go one step further and let's talk about some of the problems that heavyweights have. It's my belief that for people looking for, we'll call it secular trends, right? Gamblers need to start to look at what will be, in my opinion, a cruiserweight invasion of the heavyweight division. Maris Breedis just had a great fight against Yunikir Dortikos. Right? Let me just point out that both of those guys, and I understand, age is a concern. Both are in their mid-30s. Uh, both of those guys have certain skills that the big, clunky heavyweights at the top of the heavyweight division don't have. You know, it's just factual that Tyson Fury, who I believe is the best heavyweight on the planet, Right, have, as subscribers know, had that belief for several years now. But if you look at his history, you're going to notice that the guys who give him problems are the smaller, more mobile guys. The Steve Cunninghams of the world. Right, If you have legs and you can move away from Tyson Fury... Tyson Fury has a hard time catching up with you. There's a part of Tyson Fury's game where he wants to be the guy with the better feet, with the better agility. He wants to be able to outmaneuver you. If he's fighting a big clunky opponent, Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury wants to know, Vladimir Klitschko, Tyson Fury wants to know that when the kitchen gets a little hot, he can just use his feet and bounce outside, right? He doesn't mind a fight where not a lot of power punches are landed, provided he could keep you at the end of a jab. Now, Fury doesn't have that luxury against mobile opponents who can move with him, who are agile who might be able to match him in foot speed, who he can't hide from. He loses a lot of his effectiveness. If you have hand speed that can actually match his hand speed. Now he's been blessed because you had a wooden, and don't get me wrong, I'm sounding hard here. Vladimir Klitschko is a first ballot Hall of Famer in my eyes. But you had a wooden robotic champion years ago when Fury first got the title. He was able to beat Vladimir Klitschko. Vladimir Klitschko needed to stay in his construct. So the fluidity that Tyson Fury had was just too much for him. Well, you have similar wooden guys today in the heavyweight division, right? Let's talk about the problems that the top heavyweights have. We'll name them. Not everyone falls into this category. In other words, there's a group of heavyweights that can give, perhaps decimate, the cruiserweights who are about to invade the division. Right? I would include Daniel Dubois in that group. Right? Dubois can move. Dubois has hand speed. Dubois is throwing power shots. Dubois can corner you. Right? I would include Andy Ruiz in that group. 
Andy, quite frankly, might have the fastest hands, not just in the heavyweight division, but in the cruiserweight division. Let me also identify the cruiserweights who I feel are invading the heavyweight division. First, one who already has. He's already an elite heavyweight who people are avoiding. And that's Alexander Usyk. Right? Simply put, if we include heavyweights in the discussion of the best pound for pound, and look, I have respect for old timers who say no, the whole purpose of the pound for pound list was to shine a light on divisions outside of the heavyweight division. Okay, fine. But if we allowed heavyweights in the conversation, Usyk would be one of the best fighters in the world. Right? Usyk today, and I know he's about to fight Derek Chisora, that's going to be an interesting fight. But Usyk today is one of the best heavyweights in the world. You know, with all due respect, if you ask me just objectively, who has more talent? Usyk or better yet, skills are the words, right? We'll call talent the ability to throw a baseball 100 miles an hour. We'll call skill the ability to hit the outside corner of the strike zone on a 3-2 pitch with a curveball, right? Okay, fine. In terms of skills, Usyk to me is clearly more skilled than Deontay Wilder, who held the heavyweight belt for a major sanctioning body for five years. Well, his compatriots from the cruiserweight division, Maris Breedis, who already beat a guy, who during his career at a different time held a share of the heavyweight title, Manuel Char. Right? I would say Maris Breedis, outside of Tyson Fury, has more skill than the top elite heavyweights. Right? The big three. Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua. I know what I'm saying is heresy. I don't care. We're just trying to make money gambling. Deontay Wilder. Maris Breed has just had a fight against Dorticos. Where Dorticos has a spectacular straight right hand. It's spectacular. Now, Maris Breida somehow is able to dodge that for 12 rounds. And you'll notice there are times in that fight where Breida drops his hands. Now, Breida is moving laterally. Dorticos is one of the very best in the entire sport at cutting off the ring. If you're aficionado of the heavyweight division and you've watched fights where the guys are big and clunky and can't really move to cut off the ring, you're going to be astonished. If you look at the film of Dorticos Breedis, and you'll notice that Breedis, while he's moving, not back, but laterally most of the time, Breedis is fainting and he's coming in with power shots with both hands. Right? This is high-level boxing, folks. I just believe, even though all of these guys are in their 30s, right? Usyk, Breedis, Gassiev, I think he's in his 30s, Dorticos, I believe all of these guys are going to have more agility than Wilder, Joshua, White, I believe all of these guys are going to have more agility than those guys. I think the heavyweight division has its own problem with age. Luis Ortiz in his 40s. Alexander Povetkin in his 40s. I think what you'll find is when you have a smaller guy, and let's remember, cruiserweight now is 200. In other words, cruiserweight now is at a weight where historically some heavyweight champs have been around. 
right? Joe Frazier's not much more than 200 when he fights Ali the first time. Right? You're going to have more skilled cruisers, whether it's Breedis with his spacing, whether it's Dorticos with his ability to cut off the ring and his power. And understand, these are big men. Dorticos is well over six feet tall. Gassiev, who can get inside and drill you in the pocket. He has more stamina than most of these heavyweights. Right? Let's face it. Having a guy up on him in the pocket is not Anthony Joshua's game. We saw that the first Andy Ruiz fight. Didn't we? Let's face it, too. Who knows? What's going on with Deontay Wilder right now? We certainly haven't gotten that third Tyson Fury fight. His ear is bleeding during the rematch fight. After the fight, we're supposed to hear that it wasn't a serious injury. When's the last time your ear bled like that? We're hearing about other injuries the guy had. Right? The bottom line is... There's a lot of silence around Deontay Wilder right now. Right, We don't even know whether his next fight's going to be against Fury. Anthony Joshua, in my opinion, is about to give up a belt. Right, He understands. I believe his people understand that prize fighting is about getting the prize. It's about getting the money. The boxing hardcore from across the street People like you and I know, gee, if Usyk fights Joshua, given how loved Joshua is, if the casino gave me even money on that fight, I'd take Usyk. And you and I know I'd get well more than even money. You'd be in the sports book, they'd say, oh yeah, uh, this former cruiserweight, even though he's unbeaten and an Olympic gold medalist, um, even though he destroyed Tony Bellew, who actually had some success at heavyweight, right? Beat David Hay twice. Uh, we're going to make Usyk a plus 200. Maybe a plus 250. Right? That's a fighter who, quite frankly, if it's even money, I would take over Anthony Joshua. Now, let me just say, there's another group of heavyweights. The public's ignored them who could compete with the cruiserweights. I've mentioned Michael Hunter. What I want people to do is to compare Hunter's fight with Alexander Povetkin, with Dylan White's fight with Alexander Povetkin. Understand, everyone knows who Dylan White is. He was highly regarded. Had he beaten Povetkin, he would have been a mandatory for a major belt. But yet, we don't really focus, do we? on, you know, the Michael Hunters of the world. Even though Hunter was a decorated amateur, even though Hunter has beaten big clunky guys like Usinov, right? So, I'll just say this. Let's be clear what's happening now at heavyweight. The people with the power are the big three, right? They don't want to fight the Agile. Anthony Joshua doesn't want to fight Usyk, right? He wanted to fight Dylan White again. Now we're hearing he wants to fight Tyson Fury. Now Fury's too fluid for Joshua. I think Fury wins that fight easily. One man's opinion, I know I'm going to get blowback in the comment section here. Let's face it. This website is really about people having takes and just contributing to the public conversation, right? So I'm just telling you what I think. I think everyone here <laughs> understands. There are a lot of people who disagree with me. That's why I always have the disclaimer at the beginning of videos. But I believe the reason why Joshua wants to fight Fury is because of the money and because of the legacy. He understands that Fury has the legitimacy. 
that only one of them fought Vladimir Klitschko when Vladimir Klitschko had the belt. Right, only one of them fought Vladimir Klitschko and stayed on his feet for all 12 rounds. Both guys are Englishmen, right, or from the UK, right? I don't want to run into problems with, with travelers here, right? Both guys are from the UK. So there's a certain domestic supremacy fight that both guys are having. So I understand why Joshua wants to fight Fury even though Fury is the next level. But I believe Joshua, who's sharp, looks around and he understands that Usyk's already beaten Joe Joyce. And let's stop kidding ourselves. I know there's a Tony Yoka crowd out there. Okay, fair enough. Right? Joe Joyce should have won the Olympic gold medal. There's not much difference between Joe Joyce and Anthony Joshua. Right? Joyce, as I make this video, is unbeaten. I'm picking Joyce to beat Daniel Dubois. Right? But understand, Usyk's already beaten Joyce. That fight's already happened. Right? It, it was a pseudo-professional fight. But the bottom line is, that fight already happened. I believe Joshua, who, according to reports, is going to be sparring with Joyce, talk about a great way to get intel on your opponent. Right? Joshua understands just looking at Joyce and looking at his loss to Usyk that Usyk is elite. Joshua doesn't want to fight Usyk. Deontay Wilder doesn't want to fight Usyk. Right? Wilder's not exactly in a rush to get back in the ring against Fury. I know we're going to hear about injuries and stuff like that. Just understand, Wilder has told people in interviews that there have been times in his life where he has had mental anguish. Right? Boxing is an emotional toll. We talk about the emotional toll that it's taken on Tyson Fury. Well, Wilder, if anyone's listening, has told reporters, look, there have been times where I've had blue moods, where I've felt down on myself. If you've been heavyweight champ for five years and you've just lost your first match and you're blaming yourself, whether rightly or wrongly for it, where you're thinking to yourself, you know what, that outfit that I wore into the ring, what was I thinking? How could I have put on an outfit that weighed 20 to 40 pounds before this fight? Right, the Wilder people are even looking for reasons why Tyson Fury's punching power was so advanced, right, was so heavy. So we're hearing about questions about his glove and stuff like that. Just Google Tyson Fury glove dispute Deontay Wilder here on YouTube. Right, I believe Wilder, I'm sure he has physical injuries, right? We all saw his ear bleeding, right? An ear throws off your balance. We're hearing about the bicep problem, right? You won't hear the truth on what really happened until years from now. I get the feeling Wilder also mentally needs to recover from the first loss of his career in the highest profile fight of his career. Let's be real too. The time to beat Fury was in the first fight when Fury was just coming back fights two guys out of witness protection, then he's in against a multi-year heavyweight champ. And just understand how that fight played out. Fury, who had rust practically falling off of him during that fight, right? This is a guy who was just getting himself back into shape, had to lose a lot of weight during his comeback, right? Those first two fights on his comeback aren't even that memorable. 
It's not like you saw the fights and you thought, my God, look at the talent level. Fury looked like a guy getting himself back into shape. And you mean to tell me that that guy, if you believe the scoring of the first fight, and I thought Fury won the fight, okay, the judges called it a draw. But if you believe the draw scoring, that rusty version of Tyson Fury outboxed Deontay Wilder, an active multi-year champion, to the point where going into the 12th round, Fury, in his third fight, back was ahead of the champ. I'm sure Deontay Wilder has questions about his ability right now. Now let me just say this. The four guys I've named, Usyk, Breedis, Gassiev, Dordikos, just understand, Breedis has only lost to one guy in his career. Usyk. Understand, Gassiev. <laughs> Gassiev has only lost to one guy in his career. Usyk. Right, folks. The reason why these cruiserweight guys have losses is they've been fighting each other. They've been fighting elite competition. Right? That's the only reason they have losses. So if they get to the heavyweight division, don't you think that Gassiev in the pocket would be too much for Joshua? I think so. Right? Wasn't Joshua tired and winded in the middle of that Klitschko fight? Right? He gets knocked down. That's the other thing. Joshua's been down in fights. Right? He gets knocked down. He gets up. Right? Folks, he's finished. In your wildest dreams, you understand that if Gassiev gets a guy that hurt, he's not going to do a Vladimir Klitschko. That guy's going to have to deal with volume from Gassiev deep in the pocket. Volume. Joshua's not surviving that round. Let me say this too. All you have to do to figure out the potential of Maris Breedis, who here again, is one of the best fighters in the entire sport pound for pound. Right? That's who he is. What I want people to do is to look at the end of his fight against Manuel Char, heavyweight. Folks, that's a mismatch. Char looked better, quite frankly, against Vitaly Klitschko than he did against Maris Breedis. Char ends that fight out cold. I want you to look at Breedis at the end of the fight. Breedis doesn't even look like he's breathing heavy. Right? At cruiser, the guys move better. At heavyweight, are you positive that big clunky guys are going to be able to match Maris Breedis's dexterity? Right? That's an open question, folks. Joe Joyce. Joyce, privately, is one of my favorite fighters. I like the moxie. I like the idea of a guy joining the sport late and saying, you know what, I'm going to represent the United Kingdom at the Olympics. I like the way the guy gets ripped off in the gold medal round. He doesn't moan about it. He goes about his business. I look at his resume. It's much more impressive than people realize. Right? His fight against Usyk doesn't show up on his professional record. He fought Joe Hanks. Joe Hanks is tough. Remains to Vern, used to be heavyweight champ. Has had some great fights. Can actually box. Look at his fights against Chris Ariola. And Joe Joyce beat him. Right? Joe Joyce is patient. Brian Jennings. Goes the distance against Vladimir Klitschko. Joe Joyce beats him. Understand, Joe Joyce is winning these fights dramatically. But a Joe Joyce, who's a thinking man's fighter, has slower hand speed by heavyweight standards. 
right? This is a guy who has sparred with, you know, Tyson Fury extensively. He has slower hands by heavyweight standards. Does he have the hand speed to deal with a Maris Breedis? Right, so, Breedis recently talked about how he's thinking now about going up to the heavyweight division. Right, he just won the Muhammad Ali Trophy at Cruiserweight. The heavyweights at the top are going to freeze him out. Right? It's a bit of an optical illusion. Understand, Breedis is going to be like Usyk is today. One of the most dangerous men in the heavyweight division. Now understand the good routine that the big three at the top have going in the heavyweight division. Right? Tyson Fury is saying, hey, I want to fight the best. I'm contractually obligated to fight Deontay Wilder, who knocked me down twice. Let's be real here. Wilder comes within a second in the first fight of beating Tyson Fury by stoppage. Right? Fury gets off the canvas in the later part of that count. It's the second time, not the first time, it's the second time he's hit the canvas. So Fury has legitimacy when he says, hey, this champion gave me a shot at the WBC belt in my third fight back on my comeback, right? That first fight was a draw. The second fight I won, we need a rubber match. Okay, the boxing public is going to go for that. Then, of course, Fury saying, hey, I want to fight Anthony Joshua. Right? I know there's dispute here. Boxing hardcore, I've heard you. But in my opinion, Fury could say, look, I'm the lineal, not just the WBC. I want to be undisputed. Anthony Joshua has belts. He's the man I need to fight. Now, what boxing purist is going to raise their hand and say, hey, not so fast. You know, shouldn't you be fighting Maris Breedis? Right? When's Usyk going to get his shot? Right? Anthony Joshua has fought tough guys. Right? Vladimir Klitschko, when it was unclear who was going to win that fight. Joseph Parker, when Joseph Parker had a share of the belt. Right? He's already fought Alexander Povetkin, who you just saw beat Dylan White. And, of course, Joshua has already fought Dylan White. So these guys understand. Now's the time to go for big money. Now's the time to fight each other. I get it. I don't fault the effort to consolidate the titles. I don't fault Fury for fighting Wilder and then pivoting to fight Joshua. I don't fault Joshua for saying, hey, I have multiple belts. I'm going to have multiple mandatories. Usyk's going to have to wait. He's new to the division. I'm going to fight Fury, because my goal is to be undisputed. Okay, look, un, you know, understood. But I need to tell my core audience here, gamblers who bet on boxing, that you can't buy all of this hype. Styles make fights more so than reputations, more so than who has the belt. Today, I believe one of the toughest fights Tyson Fury could possibly have, in fact, I think it's a tougher fight than fighting Joshua, would be if he were to fight either Usyk or Michael Hunter. Right, I believe Maris Breedis is a tougher fight for Fury than Anthony Joshua. I know this is heresy. 
I understand the heavyweight division has nations, right? You have Wilder Nation. They believe they won the first fight. They are concerned about gloves in that second fight. They are concerned about the weight of his costume entering the ring. Right? I get that you have Joshua Nation. They feel that that second Ruiz fight should have been the first fight. That Joshua just didn't move enough in that first fight. Joshua might have been distracted. That first fight was his first fight in the United States. Andy Ruiz was a last-minute opponent, right? It was supposed to be Gerald Miller. Joshua was prepared for Miller. He gets a different guy in the ring. I know Joshua Nation says, hey, our guy knocked him down before we got knocked down in the fight. Joshua just got a little bit over-anxious, started slinging punches. Okay, fine. Fine. Just understand. Just like Andy Ruiz, hand speed-wise, combination-wise, skill-wise, was too much for Joshua deep in the pocket. I believe Maris Breedis would be too much for Joshua deep in the pocket. Contrast Gassiev's volume to Deontay Wilder's volume. Understand, Gassiev wouldn't be there to go the distance against Wilder. Gassiev wouldn't be there trying to run in the first round. Gassiev would see a tall guy in front of him. Gassiev is two-handed. He would see a slim, slender midsection in the first round. I would expect Wilder to try to hunt Gassiev, right? After all, Gassiev is a cruiserweight who's now up at heavyweight, right? People have egos. The heavyweight champ is going to say, what is this cruiserweight doing in my neighborhood? But understand, there'd be a different dynamic in that fight than other Wilder fights. While Wilder's there trying to dominate Brazil, Gassiev, Gassiev would be there Right, Gassiev is kind of like Mike Tyson. Gassiev would be there hunting Wilder. Right, so don't fall too much in love with the weights. Let's remember Roy Jones, James Tony, at different times gained weight and beat the heavyweight champion. Right, I'm just telling you right now, just based on skill level you have an invasion of the heavyweight division by cruisers no one's going to say it out loud but Usyk already is scheduled to fight in the heavyweight division Gassiev is training to fight in the heavyweight division Breedis just issued a statement just issued a statement that he's considering moving to the heavyweight division. Folks, these are elite cruisers. This is a full-on invasion of the heavyweight division. Right? Usyk doesn't mind. Joshua vacating a title. Understand, Usyk in his 30s doesn't want to wait. This isn't one of those, hey, player, just let me fight Tyson Fury when he's available. And then I'll promise you the first match after that. No, no, no. He's not going to wait. Right? Usyk understands. If this guy throws this belt in the trash, like Riddick Bo did in the 90s for old timers here, I'll earn it. I'll then put it around my waist. Which one of these big clunky guys is then going to try to take it off me? I think the cruiserweights know that they have legs at heavy. Let me also say this too. Understand there's another wave, right? Young guys. This reminds me a lot of the 1980s where you had Larry Holmes, older fighter. You had Michael Spinks, older fighter. You had some other guys in the mix who were older at the time, right? And, of course, boxing's rock, paper, scissors. Just like I believe the cruiserweights are more agile 
than the big clunky heavyweights, right? Not the Michael Hunters of the world, but the Wilders and the Joshuas of the world, right? I also believe that boxing's a young man's game. You're going to have not just Daniel Dubois, but you're going to have other young guys who are going to be thinking to themselves, I'm younger, I have more stamina than these guys in their 30s, right? Understand, Marius Breedis is 35, for crying out loud. Around the same age as Deontay Wilder, right? You're going to have young guys think to themselves, I have the hand speed. I have the power. I have the stamina. I'm 21, I'm 22, right? Ali wins a title at 22. Tyson younger than that. I believe Floyd Patterson is down around that era too, that age range when they win titles. You're going to have young guys who think, hey, this isn't the time of a 35-year-old. This is my time, right? The heavyweight division's in transition. Don't get fooled by the ossified setups, the fights that are scheduled right now. Right? 30-something Tyson Fury fighting 30-something Deontay Wilder for the third time. Then pivoting. Pivoting. In 2021 sometime. To fight the 2012 Olympic gold medalist. Anthony Joshua, right? Don't get fooled by what looks like the order right now. They're cruiserweights at the gate who are elite, right? In hindsight, that Usyk Breedis fight is one of the biggest fights of our time, right? Usyk, by the way, goes to Breedis' backyard and wins a close decision, right? You have cruiserweights who don't buy into heavyweight supremacy, who are now invading the division and who are just waiting for the opportunity. You also have, as I said, a different group of heavyweights. I think Dubois loses to Joe Joyce, but Dubois against Maris Breedis, I'm not so sure. Even though Breedis is more skilled, more experienced, right? Dubois has youth, speed, power, legs that could pose a problem, right? Just be prepared for major change, for major upsets. And to the gamblers, right? When Gassia fights a heavyweight and they're offering you better than a plus 150, that bet needs to make itself. You don't have to be Einstein. You don't have to be Nostradamus, right? If Maris Breed is, it's the heavyweight division, and they say a bet greater than a plus 150, you need to take that because Breed is, quite frankly, would have a better than 40% chance today against Tyson Fury, right? If they hit, figure out your number. If they hit that number, Usyk, you know, all I have to hear is that Usyk's an underdog. I don't even need to know the opponent, right? If I hear that Usyk's an underdog at heavyweight, folks, he's the choice. Whether it's against Wilder, whether it's against Joshua, whether it's against Tyson Fury, right? Odds matter. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Let me back off that last statement. If Usyk's better than a plus 140, okay, then I'll take him over Fury. Anyway, let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.